Hi everyone, welcome to another video. I have been getting a lot of questions recently and some of you have asked specifically about the takeaway. So in this video, I'm doing a bit of an overview on how I would teach the takeaway and discuss some of the misconceptions I hear and some common mistakes that I see a lot of people make. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and if you are new to the channel, please subscribe to see more golf related content. Now I believe that the takeaway is very important just because how you start the swing can directly affect how your body moves in the backswing, how you position the club, all sorts of stuff, kind of like a domino effect. So if you start the swing off with too many moving parts, your body will have to make a lot of compensations or little adjustments, which is not ideal for consistency. So what I do with a lot of my students is ensure that they're keeping as much unnecessary movement out of it as possible. From the side view, there are three main points to consider. So the first point is that you want to start things off mainly with your body. So typically with better players, you'll see that their shoulders and their hips will, will turn relatively at the same time. Number two is that their arms will stay connected to them. So what that means is that their, their hands will move around their bodies as they turn. The arms won't spread away from them or move closer in towards them. And three, the club face is square. So for there to be a square club face, the face is actually pointing a little bit down towards the golf ball. From the front view, you will see that the arm stays straight and while the body is turning, there is no movement off of the ball. The most common takeaway that I see with a lot of players is one where they're not turning their bodies enough, which causes their arms and wrists to break down and they roll open the face with the club head too far behind their hands. From the front view, since the body is not turning enough and the arms are bending, you will see that the arms stay fairly close to the waist and the trail arm will fold and hide behind the lead arm. I'm going to be explaining the most common mistakes that I see with the takeaway and explain what you'll need to feel in order for you to get in the right position. Now to deal with the, the body first, okay, so obviously if the body is not turning, then if you focus on the buttons of the shirt and the belt, they're kind of pointing more so uh, directly in front of you. So you want to focus on pointing the buttons of the shirt and the belt kind of more towards the camera or you guys, okay? Turning more so at the same time, okay? So you can see I'm pointing both the buttons here and the belt more kind of towards you. And it's okay for you to have a change in the knee flex, okay? So my lead knee will bend forward and the trail knee will kind of straighten out slightly. So that will just give my hips more mobility uh, to turn, okay? So if you can kind of coordinate that a little bit more together, okay, that's gonna increase the amount of turn that you have uh, in the beginning. Now, to deal with the arms being straight, okay? Obviously, if your body isn't turning, then in order for the hands to keep going, then you're gonna to have to break down the arms. So in combination with the turn, you'll be able to kind of keep your arms extended just to about when the club is about parallel with the ground up to there, okay? If the body is moving enough, it should feel much easier to keep your arms extended. And the third, probably the most uh, difficult pe thing to, for people to grasp is just how to ensure they're not moving their wrists too much. So they're t twisting the handle in a way to where the, the knuckles of their, their lead hand are pointing more up, okay? And the palm of their trail hand kind of faces more so up towards the sky. Okay, so that will cause the club face to kind of turn open to where it's pointing more so towards the, the sky as well. Okay, so to get the club face square, you just have to focus on feeling the opposite. The knuckles of my lead hand pointing more down to the ground and the palm of my right hand also pointing more down to the ground. So that's gonna directly affect the club face as well. So it's pointing slightly down more towards the ball. Now to adjust the part where the club gets behind the hands, okay, this is a little bit tricky for, for people, but again, you wanna focus on the opposite feel. So if you see from this position here, my hands are bending kind of this way. Okay, so the club's getting behind my hands. So you wanna feel as if the club is more in front of the hands, this way. So it's a combination of keeping the palm down or the back of the left hand down to ensure the club face is square while feeling that the club head stays more so in front of the hands. Now when I get people to try this on their own, I see a very, very common mistake uh, that everyone tends to make. So 
that mistake would be the feeling of wanting to lift the hands kind of straight back while trying to keep the club face down and in front of the hands. So they'll look like they're taking it back more like this with their hands very high in relation to the club head. They're just forgetting to make sure that their hands and their body is kind of turning instead of um, almost kind of tilting to the left. So if from the front view, instead of it looking kind of like this, okay, the body turning, they're lifting their arms and kind of tilting to the left. You can see that my lead shoulder will drop in relation to the right. Um, you, you really, really don't want to practice it this way because everything is just kind of going straight back. Okay? Now, I'm going to share with you two drills to help ensure that you don't make this mistake um, and to give you more of a correct feeling. So the first drill involves an alignment stick. So what you'll do is you'll grip kind of close to one end just so that there's a, uh, an extension on the back end uh, of where you're holding it. If you're a right-handed golfer, you want to place that extension kind of on your left side. Okay, so when you're gripping it here, with the extension kind of right up against your side here, like that, okay? When you take the club back, if you are a player that tends to use the wrist too much and gets the club moving behind the hands, you'll see that if you use your wrist in that way, that extension will move away from your side, okay? So if you look at it, I guess, from this angle here, if I use that, my wrist to get the club head behind the hands, that extension moves away from the body, okay? So as you take the club back or as you turn your body, you want to ensure that that extension stays against your side. So you want to actually feel a pressure of that stick pressing against your side, okay, as you turn. So it'll be more like this, okay, as opposed to this, okay? So this is really, really good for a player to feel less movement in their wrists and helps them feel what they need to to help the, the club head stay in front of the hands. Okay, and this second drill uh, will involve a wall. Before you take a swing, be sure to hold the club head end, okay, because you, you might make a hole in the wall, okay, if you do this incorrectly. With your butt against the wall and in your posture, what you want to feel here is as you turn the body, your hands, will move closer to the wall in relation to the club head. With players who are in that common takeaway position, you'll see that they're not turning their bodies. Their club head will hit the wall well before their hands uh, reach the wall. Now, it will feel very difficult for you to do this if you don't turn your body. So if you don't turn your body, you'll feel very uh, uh, strained kind of in the side of your abs, okay? It'll make it very, very difficult. So it should feel very easy for you to get your hands very close to the wall um, if you are turning your body, okay? So make sure you do that. So again, just to go over it one more time, turn your body while the hands move in closer to the wall and the club head is further away from the wall in relation to your hands. Thank you so much for watching. So I hope that after watching this video, you guys have a better sense of what to feel in order to make certain adjustments. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment down below and be sure to follow me on my Instagram at Jonathan K Moss. But other than that, I'll see you guys on the next video.